Welcome to Lab Rats. Thanks for joining us for another episode of STEM at Home, where we bring you fun at-home science labs for your whole family. Today, we will be investigating the discovery that started modern science. Many historians will tell you that modern science started in 1687 when Sir Isaac Newton first published his three laws of motion. Newton loved to observe the world around him and was able to use his insight to explain how everything in the universe he knew about moved, from cannonballs in flight to ships at sea to the planets far out in space. Now as you've been watching this Newton's Cradle toy move, do you think it's been spontaneously moving the way it is, or do you think there's been a little bit of movie magic going on? Well, there's been a lot of movie magic in here, so this will violate the laws of motion because there was no force that was applied to make these changes. So I applied a force each time and just cut that out. So it is quite easy to be fooled especially with modern technology and movies. The art of science is really making sure you're not fooling yourself. All the scientific method can boil down to making sure you're looking at what's really going on. What are the real facts? Let me show you how you can discover these fundamental laws for yourself and test them easily at home. Let's do an experiment. For this first experiment, it can get a little messy, so keep some paper towels near you. So, First experiment, this is a, a, a small aluminum tray. I'm using it as a, a spill bowl, something to keep the mess down. You're gonna need a cup with about three quarters full of water. You can put it right in the middle of the spill tray. You're gonna need a paper plate, an egg, and a, a TP roll. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paper plate, you're gonna put it directly on top of the cup. Now you wanna do it as centered as possible. You can actually push down and feel where the edges of the cup are. And then you're gonna take your TP roll and you're gonna put it right in the middle. Finally, you're gonna put your egg sideways, gently on top. And the reason I'm putting it sideways is because some eggs will fall right through the paper towel roll, are, are, are too small for it, or it'll sit too far inside and it'll affect the cistern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this paper plate out to the side. Now, I want you to be careful with this because if you're not controlled, if you hit the cup of water or you hit the egg, you're gonna make a real big mess over here to the left. So, be careful with your swipe. I'm gonna now hit this in three, two, one. Drop straight down, landing in my cup of water. Why do you think it fell, the egg fell straight down in my cup of water instead of flying left with the paper plate and TP roll. So, it has inertia, it has mass, it has weight. The force applied to it was gravity, pulling it straight down into the cup of water. Well, this is a great example of Newton's first law of motion. This was perfectly stable, nothing was moving, until I acted upon it with a force, my hand hitting it. So I hit the paper, uh, the paper plate and the TP roll. I hit that with a force, they flew left. Now, the egg, I didn't hit the egg, I only hit the things underneath it. So the egg, having no force coming out this way, only has the force of gravity pulling it straight down. So it fell straight down with gravity into my cup of water. Newton's first law states that an object at rest will stay at rest, or an object in motion will stay in motion in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted upon by a force. This law can be observed when a tablecloth is whipped from underneath a dinner setting while the dishes remain in place. Because the dishes were initially at rest, they will continue in their state of rest. Likewise, when a fast-moving subway car comes to a quick stop, passengers inside continue traveling at the previous uniform speed of the car and get thrown forward. This property of matter to remain at rest or in motion is known as inertia. Newton's first law is often termed the law of inertia. Remember, an object in motion will stay in motion in a straight line at a constant speed unless it's acted upon and stopped with a force, or an object in rest will stay at rest. This will not move 
until I act upon it with a force. So Newton's second law is a relationship between the amount of force and the amount of speed. So if I apply a force to a penny, it'll slide across the table. If I apply more force to it, it'll go a lot faster. Mathematically stated, a moving object's acceleration equals the net force acting upon the object divided by the mass of the object. This equation dictates that acceleration is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. When force increases, acceleration increases. And when mass increases, acceleration decreases. For our second experiment, all you're going to need is a balloon. Now, blow it up as big as you can. What do you think will happen if I let this go? <laughs> I went all the way out the room. Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now if I push down on this table, it's also pushing up on me, lifting me up. Now it's a lot easier to see in that balloon example. So when I fill the balloon up with air, as the air is being released out of the butt end, the balloon is flying forward. So all that air being released is actually propelling it forward. So it's pushing back and the air is pushing on it. Same thing with a rocket. So rockets can get into space because we have an explosion that pushes out a ton of gas. And all that gas pushing out pushes a force on the rocket, which allows it to propel out into outer space. Newton's third law is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law of motion states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. In other words, when one object pushes against another, the force applied by the first object is opposed by the force of the second object that is equal in magnitude but in the opposite direction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. These equal but opposite action-reaction pairs define force in the physical world. When you exert a force against a wall, the wall pushes back with an equal force but in the opposite direction. When you take a step and push your foot down against the floor, the floor exerts a force back up to your foot. Every action of force has an equal but opposite reaction. Newton's laws of motion describe the motion of all objects on Earth and even all objects in the universe. They all move according to these three laws. So, for this last experiment, we're going to use some coins and a smooth tabletop. Now, think about your tables in your house uh, or your countertops. If you have a nice stone or granite smooth countertop in your kitchen, that'll work really well. Or a smooth wood tabletop works also. Um, if you're worried about scratching your surface, put a layer of wax paper down and tape it down on every side so it's nice and taut. Then you won't you can uh, won't scratch your table. So for this experiment, this will explain and show all three laws of motion. So I have here a collection of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Uh, so for the first experiment, you can just flick a coin across your table. Now you should notice that it will always go in a straight line. I'm applying one force and that means that it is getting kicked in one direction and it'll travel in a straight line. Now remember Newton's first law is an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon by a force and it'll travel in the same direction at the same speed. So these traveled in one direction but they all stopped. So they didn't travel forever why do you think they stopped? Well, if you said friction, you're right. You take your hands together, push them together, and rub them. You'll feel your hands heating up. So 
So on Earth, we have gravity. It's pushing things to the table and it's causing frictional force on here, slowing these down. But they are traveling in a straight line. So for Newton's second law, it states that uh, for uh, every force, if I apply more force, I'm gonna get more speed. So if I take these and I flick it lightly or I flick it very hard, one will travel significantly farther. So the one I flick harder, apply more force, it'll go a lot faster. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if you take two coins of the same type, like two nickels, and I put them close to each other and I do a gentle flick, this one stayed in its place and kicked this one away. So while I applied a force to this one, it transferred its force to here. So it hit, applied the force there, and this coin applied an equal and opposite force here, stopping this coin. Let's show that again. It stops, it doesn't go any farther. Equal and opposite force applied. So for the last one, I want you to see the difference of coins. So if I'm using a penny and I try to hit a dime, what do you think is gonna happen? You think it's gonna go farther or shorter? Well, that went much farther, that went really far. And the penny didn't even really stop. That's because there wasn't enough force on this to stop this penny. This has more weight, has more force. So if I use the biggest difference, a quarter to a dime, this should go flying. They both keep moving forward. The penny, the dime went even farther. Now, what happens if I try to do that reverse and I try to hit the quarter with my penny? This even went backwards. It goes, shoots off one direction and the quarter doesn't go very far. That's because the quarter's a lot heavier and I need more force to move it. Here's a great game that you can play and practice the three laws of motion. So all you're gonna need for this game is some string, balloons, uh, painter's tape, and a straw. The reason we use painter's tape instead of other tape is because I can stick it to the balloons and pull it off easily without the, uh, if I use duct tape or something stronger, it'll actually just rip open the balloons. So we don't want that. So what you're gonna do uh, is I drew a little line in the center here, and with two of these, you can put two balloons on and have them fight, we call it balloon jousting. But since I'm here by myself, I'm just gonna show you the how far I can get in one side. So what you're gonna do is you take your balloon and blow it up as big as you want. I'm gonna hold it, and then I'm gonna tape it to my straw. Now change your angles, change your mess, uh, see what, what effects you can do to have it change. I'm gonna start it over off the left here, and when I let it go, it'll launch way off to the side, blow right across this. Now if you have two balloons, they'll be battling for this center position, which I've marked here. Two, one, So, go. have fun with this. Come on, Blue! Woo! Mine even flew off, but I am on his half. I won the ground today. Change the type of balloon, change the angle that you put it on, changing a few factors and see how it differs, how long it'll go across your string. Thank you for participating in another Lab Rat STEM at Home. As always, happy sciencing. <laughs>